Welcome to Frontier Trading Company. As many of you know, I got my start in this hobby at a Boy Scout camp. I worked there for four summers throughout high school, and uh, it was in a historical program area. We thought we were dressed up like Daniel Boone. I was wearing a coonskin cap until very recently in the overall timeline of this passion for the 18th century. And so essentially what we were doing there at that camp was operating with no historical oversight. And in the past year, I've been able to step out of that box a little bit. I'm in college now. I got a little bit of spending money to get myself to events like the NMLRA gunsmithing seminar where I was able to build this rifle. And it's at those events that I've begun to find real historical mentorship that is so valuable to me as I begin to turn this from a high school side gig into a real hobby and a passion that I'll have for the rest of my life. One event in particular that's been uh, really formative in this kind of early uh, development period is the School of the Long Hunter at Prickett's Fort. The event's just wrapped up. I'm sitting in the front of a cabin in Prickett's Fort in West Virginia. I feel very fortunate to be here. And this is the first event that I've ever been to. And so in that spirit, I've been walking around to some of the older, more experienced guys around camp saying, hey, what is one thing that you would say to somebody that's just getting started in all this? And so in the following clips, I'll be introducing you to a few people around camp that I've met. This is uh, just a small, small sample of the knowledge and experience and some of the big names that come out to the School of the Long Hunter every year. At the end of the video, I'll join you again uh, after we've learned some things from the folks that I interviewed with uh, another young guy that came out. We're going to talk about some of our key takeaways at Prickett's Fort School of the Long Hunter. Welcome. Welcome to getting started and being a long hunter. Um, I love this and dreamed this as a kid, being at Williamsburg in 1969, met the gunmaker Wallace Gussler when I was five years old, went back to Williamsburg in 2002, met Wallace again, and if you're gonna get started in this, yeah, be prepared to spend a little bit of money on it, but do your research. Pick the time period that you like and what you wanna do. I, myself, I love the French and Indian War, colonial history on, on it, and um, again, spend a little bit of money and get yourself a good hunting rifle. I like the 50 caliber flintlock rifle right here, um, it's, but it's a 50 inch barrel with a swamp barrel for balance, and again, spend the money, do your research, get a swamp barrel, so when you do shoulder it, you're gonna you're gonna have a good time balancing it with no problem at all. But that's what the swamp it's flared on this end, flared on that end, and it tapers in the center for balance. As I'm holding this rifle right here, look how well it balances. So get a flint lock, be ready to rock and rock and roll, and have a great time. Yahoo! <laughs> Enjoy it. Okay, well, you know, as far as advice for starting out, as everybody tells us, an expensive hobby. I recommend make everything you can yourself of good materials, good linen, good wool. Sewing's not hard to learn. I can't run a sewing machine. I sew everything by hand. If you can run a sewing machine, so much the better. And buy off of uh, blankets. Go to big events, check out the blanket traders. You get your best bargains over there. But my other piece of advice is make a good friend. If you get a good friend in this hobby, you'll have a lot more fun You'll always have a companion in events, and I think for most people that get in it with a good friend stay in it for a lot longer. So that would be my advice. I think if you're going to get into reenacting, the best thing that you could possibly do is pick up a book. Don't watch the movies. They're, all the movies are good, um, and they're, they're entertaining, but find out the real accounts. It's real easy to... Find a book on the aftermarket that's marked down to from, from uh, uh, $100 to $398. And uh, if you can read the original accounts or you could read the documented history, it's going to just benefit you all the more. So that's my advice right there. So my suggestion for anybody getting into reenacting is to uh, search out an uh, article uh, called A Modest Proposal. If you Google search it, you should be able to find it. Um, kind of gives a background on and ask you the question, why do you want to reenact and what you should do moving forward? I always think it's best to find a group that you uh, kind of mesh with, uh, you know, attend reenactments, attend living history events. Find that group of people that you just feel that uh, are in the uh, same mindset as you, and they can kind of guide you into uh, how to move forward in the hobby. For those of you that are interested in taking up this hobby, once you're in it, you're hooked. It, uh, there's very few people that have come along and and gave it up. It's, it's, it becomes a part of life, 
Everything, everyone's a brother. You can leave things down, people. Everyone takes care of it and watches for you. It is a very expensive hobby. Some of us, it's not really a hobby. It goes a little bit further. But uh, anyone who wants to try it, and you're more than welcome. There's always friendly faces to help you out. Give it a shot. This is a good sport. It's good for families. Uh, you do make lifetime friends and you do make families here. I, I belong, I represent a spin-off of Robert's, Robert Rogers Rangers, um, and all of my brothers in this group are brothers. We would do anything for everybody, for each other, and we need new blood. We need younger people in. It can be expensive. Don't go out and buy the first thing you see. Just come out, take Get pictures, learn, first. talk to us, and everybody will give you ideas and thoughts, what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Uh, I don't consider myself a reenactor. I'm uh, more of a living historian, uh, and I'm in a group of rangers that we do actual live shooting and competitions. But we do events like this that uh, are just to benefit the fort and living history and get into the trading and the different aspects of this, the share knowledge. I've been doing it uh, probably about 30 years now. And uh, it, it's a great thing to do if you love history. Uh, one of the biggest things I would say for anybody getting into it is do your research, uh, figure out what you want to portray. What era do you want to go to? Where do you want to say you live from? Do all your research on that aspect. so. That you try not to make as many mistakes in buying gear because it is an expensive hobby. Um, and that way you don't have to buy stuff and it ends up being wrong. So if you would do just more of your research, talk to people, get on threads, um, go to places, uh, get on YouTube where this is gonna be and uh, just do your research and uh, take your time and really think about what era and area that you wanna uh, try to portray or or live out and then after that get your stuff and enjoy it go visit some historical sites from the time period that they think you think you're interested in uh, another thing see if you can find somebody that's been in it for a while and let them kind of guide you a little bit uh, if you can find uh, books at the library at that time period and read them that's the big thing I've have three bookcases full of books that I use for reference uh, for to do the period that I do, and uh, that's how I learn. That's how I learn a lot of things that I do. The thing I enjoy about doing what we do as living historians is it's very rewarding to come and do this and meet up with people that you might see anywhere from one to maybe six times a year, and it's just like this is a, a brotherhood, a community, brothers and sisters doing this. And, it, and it's the friendships you make. Definitely the com camaraderie. Camaraderie. Is. The friendships you make are something special. And they're lifelong, too. You yes. Know, it, it's definitely best people lifelong. people you want to meet. Um, salt of the earth people you want to meet. But I have learned so much about what our ancestors did and how they survived. Um, it, it, it's incredible. Incredible stories, yeah. Uh, the other thing people do not understand is how accurate the flintlock rifle is, was, and is. There's a lot of good stories behind that. As far as someone getting new into it, um, if you go where they have trade blankets or market fairs, you can pick up some items that, that cost a lot less that way. So that's a way to get into it. Not as expensive. It is an expensive sport. You don't have to go all out. You can be whatever you want to be. But if you're going to buy a rifle, buy the best you can buy, best you can afford. That's great advice. If you buy one that's inexpensive, I'll use that word, as you get into this, you'll want a better rifle. So save your money and do that up front. The advice that I would give to young people, and what we do need young people, is to find a time, pla time place, in history that you would like to portray, and then take your out, make your outfit fit that time frame in history, and uh, that would save you a lot of money of going, bouncing all around. It's getting to be an expensive hobby, so 
zoom in on where you would want to portray. Uh, don't go to an event and just start dropping down cash and buying everything you see in sight because for your uh, particular impression, 90% of that stuff's gonna be wrong. The, the more you research beforehand before buying products, the better. Um, one thing people ask me too is how, like, oh, you, you, you wear your clothes in a, a, you know, a very 18th century manner. And the, what I take hints from is uh, period artwork. Uh, you know, how did, uh, uh, how did uh, a, a gentleman, you know, wear his, his hat? Um, how did, uh, you know, they wear a, uh, a waistcoat? Um, a lot of times in period artwork, you see the buttons on the top of the vest are always undone. Um, so just, uh, just stuff like that, little, little hints uh, uh, that'll uh, help carry your uh, reenacting forward. Ask lots of questions. Questions are always very important. And when you see something you like, try not to carbon copy what somebody else is doing. Look at what people are doing and then ask the questions. And then ask the questions in research material, in books, at museums, and try to put yourself together a kit that way. Don't just buy because this guy has something that I think looks cool that's wearing. Do the hard research. Don't fall in the mistakes that a lot of people do and buy a lot of unnecessary equipment that you try to sell later on. So try to get it right first. And it's not a cheap hobby. It's not a cheap, uh, you know, endeavor. But it's worthwhile in the long run, and it will be. And you can do it. You know, start small, and like I said, ask the questions, do the research. Find people that are like-minded. Find people that, uh, you know, think like what you want to do. And again, talk with them and most will sit down and guide you and help you. Um, the best thing I tell anyone to do is, especially when you're starting out, and you find a book you're interested in, or especially if it's a secondary source or anything, wow. even something like Alan Eckert books, bibliography is your best friend. Go to the bibliography, and then from there you can find journals, um, narratives, tons of information, and it, it's a really, it's a great jumping board. It's what helped me a lot when I was starting that I'd, I get a book I liked, like the author's information, then I go back and I find out where he got everything from. And that leads to other journals, other information, and other, it really helps you uh, broaden your search and find some really great 18th century information. And that, that's the best thing I can tell. So that and uh, I guess honestly, just going to events, just talk to people to ask questions because it's hard to find people at these events that are standoffish or mean or just won't just provide any information they have to people. You know, put yourself out there and you know, try it out. If I can say anything to the, you young people that want to do this, we could sure use you. Uh, we're getting older, all the old gray beards, and uh, we just met some nice new young people this weekend, and uh, we hope they carry on what we've done. A lot of history in this country, and uh, it's up to us to show these people how to take care of this history, remember what they've done. Hey there, so I hope that all those videos were really helpful. Uh, with me today is Mason Lee. We've essentially spent the weekend together. Uh, you want to introduce yourself, say a little bit about your background? Well, my name is Mason Lee. I come from North Carolina. I've been with a reenactment group, Militia, that does Revolutionary War reenactments for about a year now. But now I'm getting more into the historical trekking aspect of things, wanting to actually shoot some lead, more so than just blanks. Yeah, and this is a really hands-on group here at the Ford. Everybody's so experienced, and they've been recommending us to other events, and they've invited us to some things, and I think we're both really excited to go and Absolutely. try those things out. Uh, really briefly, before I, I part ways with you, I just wanted to uh, recount you know, some of our own key takeaways. For myself, something I learned about this group was that, like I said before, everybody is just so friendly. People were offering us little gifts throughout the weekend. Um, in some cases, not so little gifts. I think we, we yeah, both absolutely. received some, uh, some real generosity this weekend. Um, but even more importantly, people are willing to share their knowledge. There's not a whole lot of critics here. There's a lot of mentors. And it's that mentorship that really propels you to the next level. And I was I remarked about that a little bit this morning to somebody, and they said, hey, you know, we all benefit from that. Even those of us that are 60, 70 years old, we all need mentorship. We're all learning new things. So that, to me, is the power of these events. It's like a little supercharge 
for you in this hobby to come out to something like this. You learn new things, you meet new friends, and it's a great time. I, what's you know maybe a key takeaway that you got out of this weekend? Uh, key takeaway of mine is always keep an open mind. Uh, you never know what you might learn. Like one seminar we had was that we all have a boxed-in impression of say long hunters, but you need to keep an open mind, look at different things, don't be stubborn. Allow other people to tell you stuff. Uh, the hospitality here is unmatched, unlike any other. You come here expecting maybe to stay on your own. Like me, I kept dried beans and jerky. I was going to do what I ate. But they invited me in and treated me like family. You know, this really is a great group. I sure hope that I can see you in coming years. And uh, thanks for watching.